It's important to note that our track record in predict predicting rate of growth in Medicare spending per beneficiary is really quite appallingly bad. And so um, Gail and I could argue back and forth whether how skeptical we should be about the um, ability to sustain the relatively low rates of growth um, in per beneficiary or per capita expenditure into the future. I may be more optimistic than she is, but the fact of the matter is we don't know. What we do know for a fact, um, and in fact we're probably conservative on our estimates, is how many more uh, beneficiaries there are going to be. The crisis, for want of a better word, is 10 or 15 years from now when we're going to have to face up to the fact that you can't cover 50 percent more people with the same amount of money. <laughs> we see a significant problem in our future. It's not going to go away. Because of the nature of retirement-related programs like Medicare and Social Security, you need to give people advance warning. And the crisis is we see this looming out in front of us, and we seem unable to make a decision about what we're going to do to let ourselves phase into a changed environment. You don't have to raise the eligibility age. The way Medicare now works is if you're past the age of 65 and you're still employed and your employer offers health insurance, first of all, if you're still employed, you're paying into the trust fund, you're paying income taxes, and if your employer provides health insurance, um, that's your primary health insurance. Medicare is secondary. So Medicare makes money, by and large, on people who are still working at 66 and 67 and 68. My mother died several years ago at the age of 83 without ever collecting a dollar in Medicare benefits. If you're healthy and involved, it's good for everybody to have you continue working. And oh, by the way, we are going to have a labor shortage. It's hard to tell when we've had so much uh, difficulty getting out of this economic recession, but we will because we have uh, uh, a low fertility rate. The baby bust generation followed the baby boom generation. Uh, and unless we have a massive change in our immigration policy, and even then, uh, it will be important to encourage uh, people to uh, work longer. We really have to change the way the labor market works. And until we do, uh, the notion of postponing retirement or eligibility age for Medicare makes me extremely uneasy because um, I'm not sure how many people in their early 60s have a realistic choice. But I think there are an awful lot of Americans now who would really like to be working um, uh, into their late 60s and early 70s whose only alternatives at the moment are minimum wage jobs at Walmart or um, um, at McDonald's. But you could also take it a step further and say you provide clear programs or entry points for people in their 60s who are unable to work because of disability, uh, broadly defined, to access Medicare uh, at the normal age. Uh, and you increase the eligibility age again, not for the current retirees, but for future retirees, uh, for those that are not in that category.